corals uh, and corals are very peculiar animals so here you can see for example a coral colony and if you would zoom in and look at it in a magnified perspective you would see polyps that look something <laughs> like that and then you can say a coral exists of an animal a vegetable and a mineral how is that so the animal this polyp is uh, harboring unicellular so very very tiny algae um, and the algae provide the food for the coral and at the same time the coral is building a so-called calcium carbonate skeleton that's basically chalk and these are these huge structures of the reef that you can even see from space so it's it's a very delicate symbiosis between the algae and the coral uh, which make it make this organism able to build such huge structures so in the terra pacific expedition we look at coral reefs as, with a very holistic approach so we try to understand what's happening at very many different levels it's like you go to a doctor um, he does not only check your temperature that's just one indicator of how healthy you are you also want to take a blood sample and look at all those parameters and the terra pacific works in in a little bit a uh, similar approach so we first look at coral so we sample wherever we sample we sample the same coral species but we also look at fish around and it goes the same wherever we go we address the same fish species we also look at algae and then very importantly we look at the water because the water is what's keeping everything together what's uh, exchanging nutrients but also pathogens and everything so all this is addressed to get a really comprehensive picture about the state of the coral reefs um, you probably have heard about that coral reefs are really under decline they are very fragile ecosystems which is in the first place because the corals themselves are very fragile uh, so very conservative estimates uh, estimate that we have lost already 20 to 30 percent of coral reefs globally and at least 50 percent more will be lost until the end of uh, this century and why are we losing it this is in the first and foremost because of rising temperatures so climate change warms up the water and the corals are extremely sensitive to that we also have as an additional factor ocean acidification carbon dioxide in the atmosphere also has an impact on top of that and these just remember it for a second we also have very local threats pollution overfishing coastal developments and sedimentation and all of these play a role around hong kong especially and this is where we come in here now hong kong so you probably know hong kong has about seven and a half million inhabitants on a very small surface it's a very uh, densely populated area but only uh, this part here really is hong kong and you see that there is a lot more people living all around in china the problem with that is that they all live around the pearl river so a lot of sewage, a lot of nutrients, which can also be harmful for the corals, just come down here the Pearl River and also impact the marine life around Hong Kong. Hong Kong has a very high biodiversity. There are very many different species living here. Um, so it's a very interesting habitat to look at. Um, and this is also where the work from HKU, where I'm working now, ties in nicely. So what you see here is a map of Hong Kong and um, the colors here show how much nitrogen is in the water. Forget about the nitrogen, it's kind of an indicator how much pollution is in the water, right? And you see that it's pretty red over here, yellow here, and it goes into blue. So everything that is red and yellow has a lot of pollution, this stuff less. On the right you now see um, coral species richness, how many different coral species exist and if you look at the map over each other you see here red we have more than 60 coral species around here like Tung Ping Chao, um, Crescent Island. There are very many corals here but this is also where the water is clean. On this side where the water is not so clean uh, there is like one coral species that can survive. But you also see from Tolo Harbor, where surely this is not the problem of uh, the Pearl River, that there's also in Tolo Harbor not very many corals anymore. So, of course, Hong Kong also is part of the problem with all the pressures, pollution, coastal development, fishing, and so on. Um, and this makes it very interesting 
when we now get on top the higher temperatures the corals are dying off slowly and in the framework of looking at the whole pacific and the coral reefs now we can see uh, which place hong kong plays and how especially this pollution uh, interacts with high temperatures and how that looks for the future of corals